Okay, class, in this video, I'm going to talk about how ADH work to conserve the body's water. Water conservation is a very important con um, concept and a role in the body because water is blood volume and that's related to blood pressure. And low blood pressure can be um, very dangerous because you're not getting enough blood delivery to the brain or to muscles and areas that you need. So the body has to have a quick way of responding to water and water conservation. So let's start with an example. So this figure is gonna go through a six step process, okay? So what we're looking at here is, when you're working out, your body should know that you're sweating, you're increasing sympathetic activity, you need higher blood pressure to deliver blood to the muscles, okay, to work out. So that is causing decrease in the blood fluid, okay? So water is leaving through sweating, okay? So that's just send a message to the brain in the hypothalamus, that command center. And that message then will stimulate the posterior pituitary right here of the brain to release ADH. ADH is anti-diuretic hormone. So it's anti-urine. Okay, hormones anti-urine. ADH is will come and act on the kidneys to make sure that water is reabsorbed back into the plasma. So we're gonna reabsorb water back into the plasma, and that should help increase plasma volume. So the the person's working out, she actually might have lower urine output and keep the water in her system to make sure that there is plenty of water to accommodate her activity and her sweating. Okay, you can watch a little YouTube video on ADH as well. So let's work through three scenarios. First is when ADH and water converse, conservation in a normal state, meaning you're drinking enough water in your normal rest state, not sleeping, not super active, and blood concentration is normal. So this message to the posterior pituitary should be just everything's fine and dandy homeostasis. ADH level is normal. And then the normal ADH level will work on the collecting duct. Here's the collecting duct. Here's the distal convoluted tubule, the collecting duct. Water will then move out of the tubule back into the blood. So here is actually where the blood will be, okay? Move back into the blood um, at a normal rate. So you're gonna absorb water back at a normal rate but also make a normal amount of urine. So the urine, if you test this patient's urine, should be normal osmolality. Osmolality is how concentrated the urine is, the amount of solute in the urine or the solution. So if you have high osmolality, the urine is very concentrated, and low osmolality is when the urine is dilute. But in this case, because it's normal, the blood plasma osmolality and the urine osmolality is all normal. Okay, let's look at a scenario where the person's over drinking water. Okay, so you decide like, oh, I'm not drinking enough water, so I'm gonna start chugging down three glasses of water at once. Well, that might be too much water for the body. So over hydration, your body's gonna wanna make sure the water is correct. Okay, so it's gonna turn, it's gonna, that over hydration is gonna not turn on the ADH, so ADH level is low. And when ADH level is low, it acts on the collecting duct to be not permeable, so it stops. Water is not leaving to go to the blood here, okay? So most of it is gonna come out as urine, and now the urine osmolality is gonna be very low or very dilute and light yellow in color, or, or very clear, in fact, okay, so less, a concentrated urine, more blood is going back to the blood. No, less blood, less, sorry, um, low, low levels of ADH, um, less water is going back to the blood and more of it is coming out in the urine, okay? So this is the case of if there's overhydration. Let's now look at a case of dehydration. So either a patient's dehydrated, there's a lot of exercise going on, a lot of fluid loss, uh, a lot of blood loss, then that's going to send a signal to the posterior pituitary that the blood concentration is too high, too little water. Posterior pituitary is going to release ADH to conserve water. ADH level will be high, and when ADH level is high, it is going to turn 
on water reabsorption. So all this water is going to come back to the blood. Okay, so it's going to be very high. So water is going to be reabsorbed back to the blood at a high rate, making very little urine. So the decreasing urine output and the urine osmolality is going to be very high or very concentrated, much, much more yellow, dark urine color. So this is what ADH does to the collecting duct. We learned about ADH before in the blood pressure unit. So here we're talking about how ADH works in the kidney, in the collecting duct to maintain um, blood fluid volume and blood pressure. Make sure you review that in this slide. But also I brought back the other hormones just for good measure. So these hormones are review, aldosterone, angiotensin, ADH, and AMP, okay? So I want you to review the RAS system on the um, renin angiotensin aldosterone system. If you don't remember, review your journal in the blood pressure unit and fill in these blanks. There'll be a few questions on the quizzes and on the tests. Um, and also look, fill out this AMP. So in these two slides, I wanted you to kind of look, think about what its actions are on the kidney, okay? On water retention and water movement. And same thing with uh, AMP and BMP, looking at how it regulates um, the GFR and then the afferent, that blood vessels. Okay, so um, review those and practice. And then lastly, this unit will end with renal failure. Okay, you have a case study homework that's on renal failure as well. Um, so um, look through this and fill in this idea. And in the intro to this, um, the renal anatomy, I talk about the function and then those videos that you're going to watch on YouTube also talk a little bit about the function of kidney other than just making urine. Okay, and when kidneys fail, then the patient has to go on dialysis. The dialysis functions almost like the nephron tubule, balancing the patient's blood and maintaining homeostasis of fluid electrolyte acid base. And you can watch a little video on that as well. So this concludes all the material for this semester. Hopefully you learned a lot. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the end of the semester, but this is the end of the urinary unit.